Hi, Sakura, and welcome to Olify Minutes. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Sakura, last year we have seen very high policy silicon prices. In December, the Chinese authorities approved a trade of an industrial silicon futures. Will this futures market be able to stabilize policy silicon prices? So uh, yeah, these contracts have been, uh, I think, in the cooking for, for for quite a few months or years even, and uh, I think it's a for the industry in general, it's a very good and positive thing that uh, these type of uh, derivative contracts have been launched. Um, now, what kind of effect it's going to have on our particular solar industry? Because the the the, the contract that has been launched in China or going to be launched is not going to concern only solar, right? It's, it's going to be used in other industries as well. Um, but the effect of any kind of such futures contract, the main point is uh, price discovery and price stabilization, risk mitigation. So for this, yes, uh, for the domestic Chinese uh, policy silicon prices, I think it will help uh, at least in, in the stabilizing of prices for the polysilicon manufacturers. And if we had this futures market before the war in Ukraine, we'd have to save the industry a lot of headaches. Well, in hindsight, it's always, of course, it would have been good to have it like when the prices were, were increasing like crazy. Right? But um, I think that uh, because we were, the solar industry was so used in having all these prices uh, come down uh, for so many years, uh, there was not much need for hedging or for uh, mitigating your price risk on these materials. So, well, all in all, I, I guess the timing is right to launch this kind of futures contracts. Uh, but again, uh, I have to say that this this particular contract in China it would be maybe useful for the for the players inside China. But in terms of how it will help uh, the rest of the world, the buying side, the panel uh, buyers, uh, uh, wafer buyers, sell buyers, whatever is outside of China is uh, really not clear. And uh, that's why we are working on uh, international policy silicon and international panel, solar panel price uh, futures contracts. And we hope to launch it uh, in Q1 next year. Do you believe that a geographically diversified polysilicon production outside China may help stabilize prices? Uh, well, again, for this, uh, we, if we're talking only about this particular contract that has been launched, um, it will not, it may not impact so much the international polysilicon makers, uh, in the sense that uh, I don't think that international players can access that market. Uh, so if I don't see any kind of uh, major advantages uh, for having this kind of contract for international players. So I think it will concern mainly the domestic Chinese producers, uh, polysilicon producers, if they want to hedge their, their, their costs. We recently reported on the first silicon ingot manufacturing in India. Do you think that this country may become one day a polysilicon exporter? Uh, India has been uh, announcing that they will go into polysilicon manufacturing for, for some years now. Um, and, and I think it's good, I mean, the, the diversification of uh, supply chain of uh, manufacturing centers uh, outside of China is, uh, of course, is a, is a trend nowadays. The US, EU, India are quite working hard on this aspect. Uh, now, whether next year we're going to see a lot of polysilicon or ingots from India, I, I highly doubt that. And I don't think that the industry is also expecting this, but yeah, it's a, it's a good way forward. I guess you also doubt we will see more polysilicon being produced in Europe or the United States in the near future. Well, US, uh, the two that are there are either ramping up, starting again, or expanding slightly in EU. It's uh, yet to be seen where there is a lot of uh, discussion right now. I mean, over the weekend as well, I think. So we have yet to see what the EU support policies will be. Um, uh, not against, but uh, along with the uh, IRA. So what kind of prices we may expect for this year? Okay, so for polysilicon, I think that in domestic Chinese uh, polysilicon, the trend uh, is down. Now the debate, I don't think that the debate is whether it's going to go down or not. I think that the, the, a lot of the, most of the industry players are expecting it to go down. Uh, the debate is on the amplitude of it. Uh, so whether 50% or not, whether that's too aggressive or not, I guess so. I mean, personally, I think it's it maybe a bit too aggressive, but uh, most interestingly for the international players and for EU uh, market, uh, sorry, US markets, 
would be concerned with the international polysilicon supplies. Uh, so that part, because as you just mentioned, the, the supplies will still remain very constrained. Uh, definitely the decoupling of prices between international polysilicon makers and the Chinese domestic uh, polysilicon makers will happen quite uh, big time uh, in 2023, I think. So, so the, the international polysilicon prices will remain high and then the Chinese policy economy because uh, prices will go down. Thank you for your five minutes, Sakura. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>